Now entering Nerdist.com. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kill Martin. Jackie Cash and Laurie Kill Martin. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. It's the Jackie and Laurie Show. The Jackie and Laurie Show. You guys, we're here. We're live. Yay. All right. We got I, people. And a lot of them are women. Yeah. Usually. The last time it was almost all dudes. Yeah. All dudes, uh, 45 to 55. Interesting demographic. Would, I wouldn't think that would be our demo. Uh, except for that we're hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I Super forgot about foxes. That. Of, yeah, yeah. That's not going to help those people. Yeah, that's go. right. If we have people, you guys are all scattered, helpfully. <laughs> you're moved all. You're all over the room. Uh, we're right. at Flappers in Burbank. We're at Flappers in Burbank, and it's 7 p.m. Still light out. Yeah, it's, it's Mother's Day, and we did a little stand-up comedy. Uh, you know that chunk is done. That the the last bit that you worked on tonight was is that done? Yeah, that's way done. That's so. I done? just had I had so done me tagging it, in front of it me. with a Hogwarts. Uh, oh, what? Cause, what? Because all the moving staircases, all, Hogwarts has a lot of a lot of different. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, there's nooks and crannies. There's uh, oh, oh, oh. There's moving, a lot of moving staircases. staircases okay. Hidden, I'll try that. Hidden rooms. In my vagina? Sure. I'll sure. put a moving staircase in my vagina. <laughs> Who doesn't a want bit? a moving staircase in our vaginas, you guys? It's the next step. <laughs> in evolution. And the next step and the next step because <laughs> they're moving stairways. because hey, it's a staircase. All right, you guys. I am, I've been alone. My mom actually <laughs> went to my sister's house. She yes! saw the desperation in my eyes. And she's like, and I'm leaving. I, I had a day and a half by myself. When does she get back? She gets back on May 21st. So oh, I had wow. like all next weekend. As well. It's a, it's impressive. Wow, that is yes. a, that's great. Yeah. Have you talked to your sister or you've just decided? No, I've totally disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like, what's happening over there. I texted her happy Mother's Day and uh, oh, she responded go. and I didn't reply. <laughs> that was... <laughs> no, <laughs> that and, uh, <laughs> my favorite thing that happened uh, probably four years ago uh, right around Mother's Day is... Uh, is this my favorite thing? No, whatever. But uh, so right before Mother's Day, probably four years ago, my dad goes, is this weekend Mother's Day? Oh, that's right. You don't need to know. And, oh, my uh, God. He, the double punch. Because <laughs> you've, you've lost two mothers. Right. I'm hard on mothers. It's, uh, I will. <laughs> Um, you are you are a tough daughter. <laughs> I am super tough. Can't Nobody take wants it. To, people don't want to live around this. <laughs> They're like, I want. I'm glad to your, your dad didn't remarry. My God. <laughs> oh, he did. He did remarry. Oh, he married a third time, but he was only married for a month because he got married at my stepmother. Like literally, like a child. He was he, like he he, he said I could get, when when Nancy started dating this guy that he played cards with, and he's like, she only did it so that I couldn't be in that card game, and I was like, good for her. And uh, I don't understand. So he got married before he ma- married well, her. He had been having an affair with this woman, Evelyn, forever. My, my dad and my stepmother had been together for 25 years. And your dad cheated on her? Oh, my father, uh, fidelity is not his strong suit. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> he has other good qualities. Right. <laughs> you have to look for them. <laughs> and if you look for them, you will find them. Okay. But it is a search. <laughs> it is a search and rescue. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, so when, when Nancy started dating Bob, uh, he was like, I could get married Monday. Women, a lot of women want to marry me. I could get married by Monday. And he did. He married Evelyn oh on Monday. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then it was uh, really great, quite well, honestly. he knows how to meet a quota. He's a sales well, guy. He wanted, he, well, he wanted four, and he used to joke about how he wanted four wives so that he yeah. could be buried in the center of them. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, uh, he's hilarious. <laughs> Do you hear the, the exhaustion in this? Anyway, yes. so, and, but he's, yeah, no, uh, but they got divorced almost immediately. Okay. And, uh, and it actually ended up being really good because it, it made Nancy, uh, it made him uh, get out of the house. They would lived together for like seven years after they were divorced. Nancy and my dad. Okay, and uh, it was it was I'm like the still golden confused, girls. but I don't want you to explain it. To I know me. it's the longest. See my published works. <laughs> you can have the backstory. You brought books, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got some shitties and some deads. People want to buy them. <laughs> um, right. I, I'm listening to Roxanne Gay's memoir. Okay. And, um, 
uh, there's this interesting thing that got me thinking about my dad, who I love dearly, but you know, now he's been dead a few years. I can kind of see a few flaws in the upbringing. <laughs> um, and she described she had, there was a sexual assault when she was 12 and it was horrific. And then she talked about how she just sort of didn't talk about it with her parents and didn't have, didn't know how to handle it, you know? And I was kind of thinking about, uh, how I never, my dad was the kind of guy that would be like, you're so smart, you could be president, but he didn't tell me how, you know? <laughs> and so, oh, here, let me just launch you into a patriarchy. <laughs> you could be president, you figure it out. It's like, I can't even, like, when I go to swim practice, the boys call me cans, and my coach is laughing. Could we get that, solve that one first? Right. And then I could be president. Yeah. But I, I was like, so then I sort of realized that I felt for a long time like, I, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to do anything. And, and, it, and I, I was thinking about how, you know, you read about, like, black parents sit down with their kids and they go, all right, you know, the, the talk, right, about how to handle how white to cops, how to be, how to be in be this murdered. society. And yeah. The, and the, uh, to try to, but, not, yeah. But no one talks to girl. A very few, I mean, you have to be able to know something. Like, my mother would have no idea. She was, you know... She loved being a stay-at-home mom, so she fit right into the society's role for her. And my dad, it just didn't occur to him. So I never, no one ever said, "Hey, you're did you're you, about to walk into a minefield." And did here's you how read you walk Hillary Clinton's it. book? I read part of it, not the whole thing. I bought it. Yeah, uh, I did so, too. I didn't steal it. What are you uh, playing? No, no. I'm, I'm saying I will never. I, I bought it because people didn't want me to, and I was like, she gets twenty bucks because uh, uh, I don't read no, any of those books. Yeah, I don't, I don't read any of those books of of the sort of the memoirs of yeah. whoever ran for whatever. Um, I I I can't. But I th- I bet you that at some point, either Hillary Clinton's parents explained it, or they. Um, they pushed her in a different way than your parents. Her mother was a, a very strong woman, and her mother sort of pushed her in that direction. Right. You know? It's, I, I know that, like, because I went to college, but the only reason I went to college, because nobody in my family, like, neither of my parents graduated from high school. And then my three oldest brothers um, d- didn't graduate from, the, like, the, they have GEDs and then graduated high school, but then didn't get uh, university degrees. And then my brother, my fourth oldest brother, and um, and my sister were like, you're going to college because we're going to college. So they knew how to do it by then. Right. But it was this very much, and, and I've seen it in other branches of my family where if someone doesn't do the paperwork for the kid, yeah, that's the hardest part is to know all the different fucking paperwork. And so it's, it's. It's it's like that. You have to yeah. You, you have I mean, to have done a little bit of it yourself. And my dad, like he was an engineer, and he worked almost exclusively with men. I think there was one female engineer in his entire career. But it didn't occur to him to tell to go. Wow, my daughter's walking into a world like that. I, I need to. Well, he didn't see it. He was living no, in a fishbowl of yes. all dudes. Yeah, but. But he believed in you and said that he was like, you're really smart. You but can it, do whatever it, you want. You know, it, then that's great. But it, it, it's not enough to believe in somebody if you don't show them how to, to do it. Right. You know, right. if you don't give them a roadmap. Or at least some tools. Or like, just like acknowledge like, hey, you know, some stuff uh, might not be your fault because you're operating in this, in this sort of situation where, where men are going to be favored almost constantly but, and so because i i think i spent and, the, and we were talking about this earlier it's like we see a lot of female comics that are getting stuff like at a really quick time in their career like within the f- first five or ten years of their careers and it's it's hard for you and me to be like oh my god like it took us 30 years oh, to get right. that stuff and i'm and it's it's you know part i, I think when i was like michelle wolf's age or you know other other comics, I I just didn't have that confidence too. I I mean, it, and I kept thinking, oh, it's my fault. I'm not getting. On I these, always on had the Letterman or whatever. You know, nobody cared. I had all the confidence <laughs> in the world, and nobody gave a shit. And yeah. uh, I, the first late night set I did, I remember uh, practicing. It was Conan yeah. five years ago, I believe it was That's four or five years ago. Unbelievable! Right, that it was and, only five years ago. Right, and so I would go around and I'd say, "Can I get five minutes? Can I get five minutes to run this set?" And everyone was like, this is your first late night? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I, no, I just got to run it. Right. And, um, but it didn't occur to me until it was over that I was like, yeah, it did take me, sadly, 25 years of God. doing this for anyone to put me up. But 
it was, uh, boy, was I ready. <laughs> You guys so ready. Not a misstep. So, <laughs> kind of nailed it. Kind of nailed that first set. <laughs> it was Emily. I, I, I ran it at Meltdown, and Emily yeah. Gordon, I got off stage, and she goes, that, that might be the perfect uh, set. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've been polishing. <laughs> it wasn't the same oh jokes, God. obviously, from 20 years ago. Yeah. I've written new jokes, you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm always writing new stuff. But, uh, but I, yeah, I was more than ready for it. I will say this. Now, I badmouthed my dad. My father never, he didn't give us any sort of, he gave us tools, but yeah. he didn't give us, what he gave us was he gave us an attitude. Like, I have four older brothers and an older sister, and my sister and I were treated exactly as poorly as our, our brothers were. <laughs> like, literally, he, he one time said to me, well, you might as well try. I'm going to make funny either way. About stand-up comedy. About anything. He said, you might as well live your dream, because if you make it, I'm going to make fun of you. But if you don't make it, I'm going to make fun of you. So why don't you just do it? And, uh, you know. Is this this an Armenian thing? uh, It seems to be a very Elliot Cation thing. I don't know. It's an Elliot thing. What (laughs) if all dads name Elliot parent that way? (laughs) My condolences. (laughs) Except, but it's, no, I mean, like, and we've talked about this before, is that, like, I was raised not to have imposter syndrome, but to be an imposter, right? Is to to fake it till I make it kind of thing. He's like, you could do that. What, what, just, you know, if you don't, if they fire you, then what happened? Who cares? Just get another job. See, and my dad never, he didn't have that kind of attitude. Right. Your dad was like, no, you work really hard. You know what you're doing. And then you do the job and you should get the job because you're really good at it. And you're like, you're missing the fact that I have these parts and you have those <laughs> parts. And some dirtbag over here gives a shit. Well, my, my dad also had, you know, years of unemployment and stuff like that. So it's not like he had this. You know, he was also struggling himself. But I, I, I think did he have a fear of failure? I'm sure. Think? Oh yeah, I mean he. They almost went. Where did you get it? They from? did That's go what bankrupt, I'm asking for. and they went almost went bankrupt earlier. Okay, and yeah, so yeah, he had a huge, huge fear of losing the house and and all that kind of stuff. That's why he started working overseas because it paid more money. Oh okay, but um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, just because I think that because um, my dad, I mean he. I think the sales thing, because he's a sales guy, Mm -hmm. is he doesn't, he knows that he's going to make the pitch 300 times and he's only going to make the sale 30 times, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's good for trying to get work as a comic to to have that kind of attitude. I never, I, I know people who don't send avails to people that haven't booked them in years. I continue to send avails (laughs) to people that haven't booked me in years because maybe one day they'll, they'll book me. Yeah, you never. They know, cost you, might, you might email them right when they have to fill that week, and they right. just go. Oh, fuck Maybe it. there's let's like sh- somebody. Let canceled. me shut her up and book her. Finally, <laughs> exactly. And then you go, and they they are reminded that the reason they didn't book me is because they've never enjoyed my standup, <laughs> <laughs> which is of course hard to believe <laughs> inside my head. So I'm like, what what what's not to like? Anyway, um, I I. Uh, Conan's gonna he's starting a podcast oh and going down to half an hour the show's going down to a half an hour but right. it's it doesn't affect the comedy like he's actually leaning into comedy a bit more and he's gonna go on tour with some stand-ups and stuff like that so he's gonna start doing more stand-up or he, he, yeah like okay. he's gonna do live shows oh, and that's bring awesome. stand-ups with them so it's yeah, actually yeah. good for stand-up so that's ama- and then don't worry stand-ups don't worry comics that's uh, <laughs> the best news ever quite yes. honestly because uh, he's the only one who likes me uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah I but, know what you, I know I know what your question was. Yes, but, you'll be on again, I'm sure. <laughs> Guys. And, but, um, but so he's starting a podcast? Finally. Yeah. What, uh, does he well, need it's... to borrow my Zoom? What's happening? <laughs> we, we, he, he's going to be, um, he's going to like have the writers kind of talk to him and just ask him like fan questions and then the conversation just goes from there. Oh, he's going to answer like fa- fan yeah, mail yeah. and then they, so, they're going to talk about stuff? Yeah, so uh, I taped one of them and Jesse um, Jesse Gaskell, who's another writer, she taped one. And, uh, so and are they fun. an hour? Are they they're an hour? like a half hour. Half hour. Yeah, oh, that's quick. nice. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, so that'll be coming out soon. But it's it got really wonky about comedy when we were talking about it. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, it, 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 all you want to talk about is comedy. 
<laughs> There's no, part. No, no, I mean it's just like a common language, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, 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 his, when he started at, in late night, he had almost no stage time under his belt, and so it, it's almost like he was doing his first year of comedy. He was doing his first year of comedy, where where normally you're doing open mics and no one's watching you, and you have a little bit of room to grow. And he was doing it on television every night and getting reviewed. I mean, it's it's really a, a fascinating, crazy right the, the way to get the something. way he got booked was crazy. Yeah. Just out of the writer's pool from The Simpsons, right? Yeah, and he worked for SNL, so Lauren okay. uh, Michaels knew him there. Um, wow. So what did you think about um, Kelly Sadler and her um, hilarious joke about John McCain? Well, I think she needs to keep writing. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we leave John McCain. I mean, John McCain She thought has, she was at an open mic. And, right. uh, she had, it was running recorded. lines. Second show Friday. <laughs> thought she'd go dark. Um, <laughs> I, it was. It's weird to me because I mean, I, for personally, John McCain has let me down several times. Yes, but, but the one time he went thumbs down on the uh, health care bill was amazing. Sure, uh, I mean the, no, on the, the Trump I mean, care thing. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. it's 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 great. I don't know what I don't know what happened to him in <laughs> Vietnam in seventy two. Right. Uh, so I have a fair amount of sympathy for him, but yeah. also. Uh, a fair amount of uh, I, I'm I'm not psyched. Right? No, I'm not no, psyched about the guy, but I, there's not a chance in hell that someone should make fun of a dying man. It um, doesn't make any sense. No, that's I think anyone could make point. fun of a dying man. But uh, but you but uh, I mean I wouldn't do that on stage because I just think oh that's probably not going to get a laugh. Right. <laughs> that's and, why you wouldn't do it. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> well, dude, I, I made jokes about my dad as he was dying the whole time. So uh, right. to me, that's open but season. But he was there. He right. was there. <laughs> and he's my dad. Now, if someone had made jokes about my dad when he was dying, someone else, I would have yeah. hunted them down and shot them and probably been as angry as Megan McCain, who I also dislike intensely, but I totally <laughs> understood where she was coming from right. on the view. The one Megan time did? I felt like I understood her. Um, but um, it's, it's uh, you know... I, I don't know. It's they're public servants, and and but they they're also <laughs> they they're in a room where they need to be. You know, they're trying to fill out, figure out their horrific policy. You know, right? And it's like morning radio. They're the- there for four hours. No, they got to fill the time. In theory, they're supposed to be able to say stupid shit like that and then just work on their policy. It's almost like a writer's room where you you're going to say crazy shit and then you come up with. Right, comedy. a thousand fisting jokes, and then someone says <laughs> yes. something funny. Yes, well, that's, you, that's you, what I envision. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it's weird. Like, I mean, as a you know, a, a person that hates her and everyone <laughs> she's ever loved, um, I'm like, I fucking hope you go down, bitch. But, oh. but uh, you know, I I kind of. Um, think Would you have some empathy? I do have a little bit of empathy, and I, but I also love whoever leaked it. You know, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It doesn't. But, but it was. It's also like that's almost something that should have been leaked after McCain died. Like, why put him through that right now? Why put his family through that right now? Just to have them do that, have have that extra angst. Anybody in that room, right, is a piece of shit. That's true. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, yeah. So okay. the leaking of that from a piece of shit about a piece of shit is... <laughs> it's a piece of shit on piece of shit crime. It very much is. <laughs> the entire government needs a case of Depends shoved up its ass. And uh, I don't know that I'm that, not sure that, that works. would work. But I don't know that that analogy or whatever that I got, is... You know what? I got the feeling behind it. You should, oh, the sentiment? <laughs> that there was some sort of trouble? Yes. Okay, so what did you think about um, Amy Schumer? Uh, <laughs> she did this. I have I have like 10 opinions on this. Oh, yeah. She she um, showed up at Caroline's where a guy named Brandon, do you know his last name? Nope. Okay. Um, Which is uh, the saddest part of that because yeah, Brandon it didn't deserves help as, a last as name. As much as guys. it should have. But, uh, <laughs> but um, so he was headlining for the first time. And the, for, at Caroline's. By the way. And the his first, family was there. My first thought was, I've never headlined Caroline's. But that's okay. <laughs> All right. Let me try and have empathy for this guy. So, so he's headlining and his family's there and all that stuff. And right. she's working out her SNL monologue. And, you know, so you've, she, you're bopping all over it. It's like working out a late night set. She's probably going to 50, 
you know, s- was shows, she spots. or because here's my here's what okay, so, oh, t- finish the story okay. of what happened. Well, I, okay, so so uh, so she showed up after he was on stage, and then just said from the side of the room, "Hey, it's Amy Schumer. Can I go up?" <laughs> right. Ah, so it was a, a regular. Set. It was a regular In the comedy of club. His set. So there's regular comedy club has yeah. usually ten to fifteen minutes for the MC, right? Twenty to thirty for the feature, and then forty five to an hour for the headliner. Yeah, the headliner had just gotten on stage, had done five minutes, and Amy Schumer pops up from the side over here, goes, <laughs> "Hey, Brandon, it's Jack, it's uh, Amy Schumer. Can I just do ten minutes right now?" And he was like, "Sure." Yeah, and you can't say no at that point. No, you point. can't say no, but he was also Because the audience is probably like, sport. oh my God, that's Amy Schumer. Right, right. right. So he was a really good sport about it. Yes. And um, and then he got up after she did her 10, and then he crushed, and it was fine. Yeah. But, okay, so now it's... So that's... I've never heard of a comic ever doing that in my no. entire life. In my... Sh- I have been asking around since last Wednesday. Yeah. Because there's other horrible things that famous people have done, or weird things. Usually or, they'll bump you, and they'll go up in front of you, and then do an hour or walk the room or something in but between that's comics in between not in the while middle you're in of the your middle set of your, yeah and i've actually i saw roseanne get but it wasn't her she didn't do it it was probably 1990 89 yeah. or 90 she came into the comedy gallery in minneapolis minnesota and the audience lost their minds they're right. like roseanne Barr's here and uh <laughs> and little did we know I think we all, <laughs> little did we know what that we were coming. about to see some mediocre stand-up comedy. Uh, so, uh, but the the uh, the audience and whoever was on stage was like, "Come on up, come on!" I think it was Scott Hansen. Yeah, was like, "Come on!" And he, you know, he owned the club, so he was like, "Please do stand up at my club." So they dragged her on stage, and she told a story or whatever. And but that wasn't her fault. She didn't. She, was she didn't even want to do it. Yeah, yeah. So and then the only other things I've ever heard are in between comics, someone just showing up and saying, "Hey, I need to get up right now." Yeah. And then they go. the 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 bad thing is is. Um, um, oh, you know what Augie Smith said today? It's like, what? right, uh, the media is covering this Amy Schumer thing like crazy. Mm-hmm. How come they're not covering anything about comics running the light? <laughs> <laughs> they're not. That's a worse crime. <laughs> the really worst, is. much worse crime. Because yeah. she kept her time. She just did the 10 and then got the hell out of the way. Yeah. So, um, but she might have been, you know, she strong armed her way onto that show. Right. And so she was probably, she's doing SNL that week. She's at 30 Rock all week, right? So maybe it's hard to get stage time. Maybe she's just working on There's sketches all week. There's not enough time, yeah. Not enough time. You have to get some sleep. Caroline's and she didn't is, know it was a three-person show, maybe. I have no idea. Caroline's was right, it's right near 30 Rock, so it's an easy jump over there. But it's, it's still like, I, I would, if I were on stage, I would be pissed. Oh, if you were the one yes. who had been interrupted? Yeah. It's uh, it. But what it did remind me of was somebody else was telling me today is that it remind because you know her manager is the same person who manages Madonna yeah. and U two. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know how U two strong arm their way onto all of our iPods. <laughs> Maybe she learned that. Who's from joke her manager. is that? That person deserves full credit. Uh, Jasmine, are you here? Jasmine, Yay. I was at a pa- I was at a pancake breakfast today, and Jasmine said that, and I was like, "Fucking hey, that's hilarious." Jasmine, what's your last name? Drake. Okay, Jasmine, Jasmine Drake. Drake. You guys, round of applause <laughs> for the funniest fucking thing. I laughed. Well, here's the thing, though. It's it's I've never heard of a guy comic doing like if I thought if if that's going to happen, it would be a guy comic. Like you Owen Benjamin or something like that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's she kind of fascinates me in other ways because she doesn't wait her turn, you know, and um, she just kind of. It, 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 you know why? In, in a good because she she, do, she doesn't have to. No, it, but in a good way. Like I remember when she she got on um, Last Comic Standing. I was in the I was there that night. I was on the dais. You know, as like part of one of the people that was on the the finalist to get in, not to not to be on right. it. semifinals. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, and um and so she got picked, and I was like, who? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wait, a, a, like you know, a, a three year old comic. What the fuck? Yeah. And I, I am totally that it, it's my turn type of comic, which has never worked. Not ever. And the sadly. industry doesn't give a shit about whose turn it is. There are right. no turns. <laughs> and I think a lot of women, um, and maybe male comics too, are like, oh, I'm not ready yet. They, they're just, I'm not going to move to L.A. or New York because I'm not ready. And they always, they're always coming up with ways to stop themselves. I was constantly slowing myself down. 
And she wasn't. She never did that. She's nope. always like, "I'm ready. Give me, <laughs> give right. me the show. Give me this. I want Madonna's manager. Right. I want to make movies. <laughs> I want to go on stage right now." Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I wish I had ten percent of that. You know, right? But, but, but the thing is, is there are people who have that attitude, and then I mean, either they can't produce if they if they strong arm their way into the situation, or they just have the attitude. Right. Like, if you look... Like, Ricky Gervais. That guy has enough attitude yeah. to fill stadiums. And he but fills stadiums. He does the job. His audience... He does the job. His do- but that's all he has to do. His crowd loves him. That's but that, all he has to but do. The, the jo- when, when they leave that show, they literally leave going, that was... I'm pretty sure that was stand-up comedy. You don't and know then, that. <laughs> that's what you think, but his audience loves it. They no, no, they completely love it. Yes, and but it's but it's not any kind of it's not the stand-up comedy that it's this it's not the it's the stand-up comedy we deserve, not the ones we need. It's like it's just okay. It's, it's just tweet okay. reading stand-up comedy. It's just okay. You right. know, it's nothing. It's not like amazing. I don't know. I want I want stand-up comedy to be. You know, if you're going to pick a, 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 a male comic out of the UK, I want it to be Stuart Lee. I right. want it to be this weird, convoluted right. rabbit hole of personal, sociopolitical, all of the things. And Ricky Gervais is just a guy who takes his shirt off and beats his chest. And but, it's but fine. That's okay, because... No, I'm not saying it is But you can real. like shitty music and great music. That doesn't mean you don't appreciate great music. Sometimes you just like, you know... Well, right. I, mean, I don't want to do of... a Nickelback joke, but that's like, you know, that's the... <laughs> obvious example right because well and, and and it's not that i haven't even i've laughed at some of the stuff he's done mm-hmm. i just it isn't but but he has that attitude that could fill stadiums and i don't know well, he's that, also famous and he that's what fills stadiums and he and he does he, no no you were talking about um having that sort of expectation of i guess so when he did pop up on that on that special where they talked to it was chris rock louis Somebody Seinfeld. else, Seinfeld and Ricky Gervais. What the fuck? <laughs> this guy. Why is he? And for him to like join that trio and think he deserved to be there, that was very uh, the, male see? to me. Well, th- that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, because he doesn't belong in that group, right? Just because of his stand-up, right? Right. Specifically because of the fucking words that come out of his joke hole, <laughs> and. Uh, which right. are not, which are a f- uh, fine, but they are not exceptional. Yeah, they're they're it's yeah. it's average. I want I want exceptional. If if you're going to hang out with Chris Rock, I even want Chris Rock to be more exceptional. But the thing <laughs> is, is he's doing you know he's he's done it. So, the guy's a genius, mm-hmm. right? That doesn't mean that everything he's ever done is a genius thing. Like, did you see Take Five? I didn't because you know why? Because a lot of comics were in it, and I wasn't one of oh, them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> There's a pr- yeah, she can't see movies. That has too I many think comics. You, should, you in need it, to know your jealousy, uh, right? I- I- entry points or something. And it, if I go into that movie, it's going to set me off. Uh, I, I cannot watch Mike Birbiglia's specials because I should be Mike Birbiglia. Oh, he doesn't know that. <laughs> he does actually. I've told him to his face that he's my arch enemy, and, uh, <laughs> and he's like, "What am I doing?" And I said, "I'm arching on you." That's what's <laughs> happening. And uh, anyway, so, but I thought that I, but I think that Amy Schumer has actually risen to the occasion, you know? Yeah. The show, she had writers. Yeah. But the stand, and the stand up is, it's coming along. I mean, and I, my stand up is coming along. Yeah. That sounds condescending, but I think that it's, it's true though. I mean, cause I, I knew her 12 years ago, right? Yeah. She, when she was here. Yeah. And, um, and so her stand up gets better. It gets more interesting it was Carmen Morales was saying something about uh, the other night yeah. here about uh, wanting to be more alt, be, wanting to be a more alty comic, an alternative. I don't comic. know what that means, Eva. Well, all it means is, is longer setups. Interesting. Yes, it does mean longer <laughs> setups. That's how I got in. It's uh, long winded, and uh, <laughs> so, but but it's just it just means being more more interesting right it isn't it's even taking stuff that's real mundane you know like back in the 80s a lot of people a lot of comics were doing well aren't punk rockers the worst you know and that was the setup and then they would talk about their hair or whatever right yeah and if you make that setup your own you can make that alternative you can make that interesting 
Yeah, I don't even want. I don't even know how to deal with alternative as a label anymore. It just it well, seems it's like it's over, all sort but, of melted but away. But I, but people what are you use recycling mid show. I'm recycling mid show. <laughs> I'm gonna take this bottle of water so, as well. Did you? Um, so, what was your final opinion <laughs> about her doing? My final that? answer. Yes. Uh, my final answer is I. It, I don't have a horse in that race. I don't care. Yeah. The guy seemed okay with it. Uh, yeah. The club seemed happy about it. The audience was seemed psyched. He got to do his time, and he crushed. Yeah. So I don't think it matters. Yeah. 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 So what is it? What, what's your opinion? Yeah, is I something think so. Comparable? I mean, yeah, I think so. I. I uh, I, I think I, I don't think I would do that. I would not jump on stage during someone else's set. I wouldn't. Remember, you gave me five minutes in the middle of your set when I was working on my Conan set. Yeah, at the lab. But we but had you, worked that out, right? You had offered that. <laughs> it wasn't me. Just hey, you're doing twelve. Can I have five of that? <laughs> you can chance? still do seven. <laughs> um, but you know, yeah, I don't know that I would do it either. But that doesn't mean. I wonder I, I have if yet that's, to be tested. I wonder if that's going to be a new thing now. I mean, that's a new that's a new uh, threshold. You know, it's a very it's a it's a brave new world. Uh, Augie featured for me here at Flappers on Saturday, yeah. and he said, "Hey, do you want to come up uh, right as I finish my last joke and interrupt me?" Because he was doing fifteen, right? Yeah, or twenty. And um, I said, "Yeah, what's your last joke? I'll just barge on the stage." Not that anyone would have gotten it. No, so they wouldn't have gotten it. You would have looked like an asshole, right? That's yeah. why we didn't do it. <laughs> it's a great story, you guys. I'm going to tell it again. <laughs> Such a good one. Compelling narrative. Uh, so, but um, yeah, it's. I, I don't know that I would do it, but I don't know. You ever think about the weird shit you might do if you were rich and famous and powerful? Like um, we're like that's uh-oh. something she's clearly... own a comedy club and book myself every night. That's what I would do. Oh, you should be killed before that happens. <laughs> Someone take her out before that becomes a reality. You don't want you, you don't want to be that guy, do you? Yeah, you yeah, want to be I do. that guy. Yes, you know who that guy is. Who? All of them. That's now, fucking. You want to be Randy Lubis? You want to grow up and be the the Lubidowski? You want to do that? <laughs> the Lubidator. No, he doesn't. Own, he manages the club. It's his club. He I would it. buy it. I would own. I would start a comedy club, and uh, yeah, I do a set every night. Remember Howard Hughes in in Phoenix? Yes, and he would do twenty minutes in every show. Dude, I would not do twenty. I'd do fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> You would do the same 15 <laughs> minutes for weeks. No, I wouldn't. I'd write 15 it. new minutes a night. <laughs> I wouldn't, guys. Calm down. <laughs> I genuinely love you, and I think that you are a genius, but you would not. You would not. I know, I wouldn't. And uh, I would like to think that you would not own a club. And uh, Lewis, you're fine, by the way. Randy, you listening to this? Whatever. Howard Hughes? He's not. They're not. Neither of them are listening to this. It's fine. But but it, it and Randy doesn't even do it anymore. He doesn't go up uh, as much because you burn the audience yeah. out if mm-hmm. you're the same person doing the same material. Yeah. And um, and I think that uh, the I mean there's a reason. Dave, who owns this club, yeah, he's on he's on once every couple of months. Mm-hmm. I mean he might do short sets in the smaller room, just like we would, and uh, just to try new stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, but he doesn't headline himself. Or or give him fifteen minutes on every show, which would be that would that would be the th- we would turn into monsters. We don't know what kind of monsters we would turn into. If that's the monster you would turn into, I bet you I'd be the kind of monster that wouldn't let people make eye contact with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like Jackie doesn't like to be looked at, <laughs> only when she talks to you, like Oprah. And when do you do that? <laughs> I do that when I'm rich and famous. <laughs> No, you talk to everybody. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I do tend to Your talk Your rule to would be in, not in effect it at would, all. It would be a terrible My thing. My summer is ruined. Oh, is it? <laughs> Moving on. My, yes. my son tore his ACL playing basketball oh, Christ. at elementary school. And uh, we're, looking, we're interviewing or meeting with our third surgeon. Is that surgeon. this knee? Yeah. It's the stabilizing force of. I think that's what happened to Vargas Mason when we, when he tried to outrun the 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 canine police dog. Wait, what? Yeah, it was. um, I went to. We were supposed to go to Afghanistan. Yeah, we went to Africa and Oman and and all that. And they the uh, the troops they took us to the canine unit and they said we could put the bite suit on. Oh right. And a dog would take us down and that would be fun. 
And uh, <laughs> there's a video of me doing it, and uh, it was super fun. Uh, but uh, they brought a 35 pound Belgian Shepherd out for me. Vargas, who's like a six foot tall, very fit, handsome black man, they brought a 65, 70 pound German Shepherd out. And Alicia Cooper goes, That is a Birmingham civil rights. I know, it's like, like they I brought do. a German Shepherd out yeah. for a. Oh yeah. my God. And Vargas was like, I do not want to run in front of that dog. And they thought he was kidding, but he was actually genuinely nervous. So he tried to outrun the dog. And you can't, he's wearing 40 pounds of bike suit. Oh my God. And I, so he almost made it though and the dude was a serious hero because he almost made it he, he was going to jump over this, uh, this this small thing but he ended up jamming his, his knee and he, and he broke his ACL or Ooh. whatever and literally flew home coach oh my god from uh, Africa horrible and oh I was god. like oh my god Vargas there will always be another four thousand dollars and uh, and he said shut up I have kids and uh, <laughs> I would still live in Africa if that had happened to me uh, that guy was total fucking hero and I would like to send my son to Africa to recuperate because <laughs> it's gonna be total fucking pain in the ass right because it's gonna if he's gonna have surgery he's, he's gonna, gonna have sur- we we went Vargas to once, had two surgeries we went to one surge one surgeon and it kind of seemed like an ACL manufacturing plant you know (laughs) and then we went to another one and that guy didn't work on kids my son's 11 so that makes it a lot more difficult right and uh so he said if it was my kid i go to this doctor at ucla so we're going to that doctor and thank god i have writer's guild health insurance right so i can hop around like this and find the right doctor but they have to take part of his hamstring and make an acl and then he's going to be in uh, like you know, have have rehab for at least six to eight months afterwards. That's remember how I was saying twelve is like the age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my That's god, gonna he's going to be in a cast. He's going to be, be cast. Yeah. So can he swim? Yes. Guess who got vindicated <laughs> on her sports uh, <laughs> tiger mothering? Um, yeah, you can swim. Um, he shouldn't play basketball or, you know, that's what he was playing when it happened. Like, like once it sort of heals up enough, he that's a good PT thing, right? That's a good physical therapy thing. Yeah. What do you mean? Good. Physical uh, swimming. Yes, when, yes, when, yes, yes. When, when, when he but he to also get has the, the reason this guy sent us to UCLA is he has like, um, like he, he said my son is sort of bendy. Like super flexible, which yeah, means yeah. his ACL, his knee isn't a super tight knee. It's it w- so it means it's, oh, compared to other eleven yes, year olds, okay. other knees, you yeah. know, like um, uh, which makes it really good for swimming sports like that because you want to be super flexible, but it's not good for landing on the ground and turning. And uh, so he said swimming would be a really good sport for my son. I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah, bitch. It's about to get intense. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We were all parented by Lori Kilmartin. <laughs> we would all be swimming laps, you guys. <laughs> you know how I used to swim as a child? I uh, was afraid to open my eyes underwater because I was afraid that the water would seep into my skull and blow up my skull. So, uh, Oh, my God. In other news, so I would play Jacques Cousteau, yeah. and I would <laughs> just swim around underwater until I bumped into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's a simple child of the people, you guys. <laughs> no goggles in your no go- well, in Wisconsin. No, no, we're the six kids. There's no goggles. <laughs> Who's got time for goggles? How much time have we done? We'll we'll never know because oh you my didn't God. make a note of it. No, I we started at seven nineteen or seven eighteen. Sure? Yes. Okay, good. And so we've done uh, uh, whatever that twenty five plus ten, which is thirty five. <laughs> do you want to do our comic of the week? Why don't you do it? Because I think you can pronounce her last name. <laughs> you guys got to see her. It was Mary Basmagian. You guys. Yes. <laughs> Mary Very Basmagian. Funny. I hadn't seen Mary perform before. I think we worked I together a long time ago. I saw her do Armenian Nights, and it made me laugh. Oh, uh, that's and great. So she was great. She just came to the show. She's sitting over there. And your Twitter handle is just at Mary Basmagian? Yes. Yeah, there you go, you guys. At Mary Basmagian. Say, spell Basmagian. B-A-S-M-A-D-J-I-A-N? Yes. All right. Oh, Woo-hoo. cool. You guys, she's great. <laughs> no, she's very funny. She's making me laugh a lot. Yeah, she, it, was yeah. A, it was a great, uh, she just did a little guest set before the show. Mm-hmm. And then you worked on uh, your new joke. I like that new joke. The Which first one? one? The one you opened with? The incels? Yeah, the incel thing. That's, uh, that's that going to be great. Is that, a, is that a chunk worth yes. padding out? Yes. But I mean, it, it's, it's very commenty on something else that's 
You know what I mean? I don't know. It leads so Where sweetly does it lead into to? Any, any number of dick jokes, any <laughs> number of <laughs> jokes about uh, the human condition yeah. of loneliness. You I could go so. there. <laughs> uh, you could talk Me? about <laughs> not just not you, lonely. Not any. <laughs> I'm very lonely. <laughs> I realized, like, with my mom not here, I'm, I'm like, I was alone, and I thought, you know what? If this was just a constant thing I can count on, I would date. I yeah, would, you know, you could talk you... to some of these assholes on eHarmony on, or whatever. <laughs> Plenty of fish. <laughs> yes, <laughs> swiping, are... doing something. I don't think I'd do Tinder, but maybe I would. I don't know. I don't Who know. Knows? It's. Uh... Do you hear about Jake Flores? Cinco de Mayo tweet. Oh, the, the ice department of, uh, the, yeah. yeah, Department of Homeland Security and ice showed up at his door. New York comic Jake Flores uh, did some Cinco de Mayo joke. It's a tw- it, and the joke was um, it was literally like white appropriation of Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, if you kill one ice agent, you get a sombrero. If you kill two ice agents, you get uh, to draw a mustache on your face. I don't know. It went like that forever. And so now, I could see I, that would in my brain. I'd go. That might cause me some trouble. <laughs> yes. But Jake Flores is a button-pushing stand-up yeah. comic. I, I don't know if you've seen him. But uh, his stand-up is, he, he calls, he doesn't even, he calls himself a pizza delivery guy who does stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which uh, would drive but, you mad. But aren't anyway. we all? But, I mean, but we but, are. We but are We all. will be. I mean, if you're, I'm not currently, but I... I, I will be uh, I in my 60s wait. doing stand-up comedy. And delivering. at Walmart. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> would you like a cart? <laughs> I'm practicing. And uh, no, but uh, so, but they showed up and it was, uh, he said it was just four, uh, four ICE agents came and because he's the guy that he is... Uh, he just, he was like, he started talking to them about... It sounded like he knew a lot of policy and was able yeah, to Yeah, he was talking to them about stuff. policy and he was talking to them about uh, uh, what he asked, he literally asked the ICE agents what good they thought they were doing in life at their job. And I was like... That's a, that's a viable very, question. Oh, very much yeah. so. And one you get away with if you are a white male. It's, he's Hispanic, though. Uh, but he doesn't, he's, uh, he's third generation. I mean, he's like okay. every generation, if you got to, uh, like my dad is much darker than I am. I'm one generation white. Yes. Cause well, both you, of my got a little Irish in you. So he's not a hundred percent Hispanic. I don't know what he is, but, okay. uh, but is both of, both of my grandparents were immigrants. Right. So their children, uh, were immigrant, uh, the child children of immigrants and, uh, the children of their children are white because right. we're white. Because we're palish. Yes. Uh, but if you are darker, you never get to be white, even though you've immigrated. And like, like think about Kevin Kataoka. His family's been here longer than mine. Mm-hmm. And everyone, he, when he does the middle, uh, the Midwest, they're like, "Wow, you don't have an accent." He's like, oh "Yeah, I've been here since 1870. Uh, <laughs> I'm of Japanese ancestry." <laughs> but guess what? And uh, so, but yeah, so it's like that. Yeah. And, uh, and Jake, no, Jake Flores. He's, uh, I believe, he's Latin. I don't know much about his. Yeah, well, Flores is a is a Hispanic. Latin. It sounds like one. Yeah, I I don't. Uh, it means I flower. See, I only see color, and uh, <laughs> what I don't see is uh, You're the I most only, racist person. I ever. only see race, but I don't know what your last name means. <laughs> That's where it all falls apart for me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. And uh, so I, I worry about uh, tweets just like I don't say that I write for Conan in my Twitter bio. And, er, you know, I just say late night writer. And usually okay. people that love to glom onto things and they don't dig that deep, you know, right. like with that Elon Musk stuff, they never brought up Conan. They're always like this lady or this comedian. Right. <laughs> yeah. So right. as long as you don't help them figure you out. They right, are they, too lazy to find things out. But I do worry, like, sometimes, you know, if I were to tweet something um, uh, akin, like a joke version of what Kelly Sadler said or something like that, it could be taken as Conan writer says, and then he's dragged into it. So right. I don't feel totally independent, you know, when I'm you're tweeting work. like that. Yeah. yeah. M- would that the Nazis who marched to Charlottesville thought about their jobs at Pizza Hut? Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> we found them. <laughs> Because it's happened to a couple female late night writers, you know. They've oh, written they get, some jokes that were 
um, you know, oh, that were it's just in their a bio. teeny bit over the, you know, whatever the line <laughs> that everyone finds acceptable right, right now. And then they 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 try to get the people that are trolling them try to get them fired from their job at their whatever right. their late night show is. It has happened to two of them. Yeah. And I think one was suspended, but then she was brought back, you know, as she should have been. And she shouldn't have been suspended. Stupid. Yeah, that is dumb. So here's the only uh, drama that happened. There was a, <clears throat> it's, it was a writers. It was staffing, right? It was staff, what? It, was, it was staffing time for writers. Yeah, there what was, are you talking about? There's, uh, you're right. I'm not using all the right words. No, uh, you, you you're but, halfway through the story in your head, right. and you just staffing let us in season. On it. It's staffing right? season where they hire people to write for TV shows. I think so. I, I don't really follow the that upfronts. too much. Right, right. It right. was. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you that it was. Okay. And um, <laughs> there you go. And then it reminded me of a story from a couple of years ago. Where uh, two people we know mm-hmm. uh, were up for the same head writer job on a show, yeah, and the guy comic called the woman comic and said, "You should bow out because I have kids." Oh, I've heard that story, right? Who it, it's and it's a guy that shocked me, right? Wait. Oh, I don't want it to be him. No one wants it to be him. Uh. Do you know who he to, who he did it to? Yes, I do. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard about that. Here you go. You came to the live show, you guys. You got to see the name on the paper. I don't want it to be him. Well, no one wanted it to be him. Uh, cause but you know what? I get, you do get desperate when you have kids. Well, and he said he was it's... kidding. He said he was kidding. Really? Do you know why? Because everybody's kidding. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I was Kelly's, hoping that you show me your tits. At the no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Unless you show me your tits. No, I'm kidding. Do you want to show me your tits anyway? Because I'm kidding. But you're going to... No, you're not going to... No, I was just kidding. Don't get mad. Why, why are you mad? I'm totally just kidding. Anyway, so it was that. Yeah. So yeah. it was a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah, but I was, was reminded of that uh, bad life decision. Well, you know, I mean, um, everyone has... You Everyone's- know, how, how often <laughs> have we on this podcast inadvertently said something totally stupid that... You Three know, times, people. I have been, <laughs> but I've I mean, somebody people of me. color are listening to going, "Oh my God, those two middle-aged you know white mean? lady mistakes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't. I know. got sweeping generalism uh, problems, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, you know. were you like when the Schneiderman thing went down? I was like, "Oh fuck!" All right, because he's a liberal magoo, but, but he's also what? a piece of shit. There's right? also a million lawyers that aren't pieces of shit that are just as pissed and just as willing to go after Trump. And there you go. He's going. He's being replaced by this woman named Barbara Underwood, I think. Oh, who, who's a, a delight, a oh, badass, and has always yeah. been. Um, she seems like one of those that was always like super smart, but was never number one because she's not a pushy broad like you would need to be. And um, it's all being passed around. I feel bad. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, you guys. <laughs> Talk about yourselves. I like. Yourselves. I like. I'm, I like I'm both bummed, of those I'm bummed people. that that was. That's the name. I was like, oh fuck. Whatever. Did you um, not know it was him? You know, it, 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 yeah. Once, once I reminded yeah, you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd heard that. It's fine. It's. Uh, he was just kidding. <laughs> Did he get the job? <laughs> Neither of them got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. Huh. That ma- that sure made well, it worth his while to burn she's that doing fucking great. bridge. She's doing great. They're all they're both doing fine. Yes, I mean that's the thing. Neither one of them's living check to check. You guys, it's all working out. Yeah, uh, but you do always feel like you're check to check when you're between jobs. Oh yeah, yeah especially those writing jobs. I bet. Yeah, uh, as opposed to comedy, which I just uh, it's just a gravy boat. Man. <laughs> I feel like I've forgotten how horrifying it is to be only a comedian. Uh, you I mean, might have. <laughs> I, I think I did because I remember after my kid was born, I was like, I had saved sixteen thousand dollars, and I was like, "It's gonna be fine. good. I'm sweet." <laughs> I had no idea how expensive, <laughs> like four thousand for the hospital. Like right. what? Oh my god! And then three um, months later, you're like, <laughs> "How much does that pay?" Yeah, and, uh, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know how I'd be able to do it if I was just to stand up. I don't know what I would, like. I was about to get back out. in with my parents before I got hired on Conan. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they they would have helped you raise the boy, and uh, <laughs> you still. What, what, uh, what do you mean? While you went on the road. 
yeah. you would have had to go on the road. Uh, yeah, I don't know what would have happened. I, you, it, Speculative fiction. You can't leave, would have like, left the kid the car. A two-year-old with <laughs> a 75-year-old. It's Why not, not a good combo. Come on. It's, uh, it was uh, Augie Smith's jokes about his kids, by the way, yeah. last night were so fucking funny. Great. It was, uh, I headlined over the weekend here, and, um, and Carmen Morales featured on Friday, yeah. and Augie Smith featured on f- Saturday. But I wish it could have just been. I wish I could have just watched the two of them, because they were so fucking funny. Yeah. Uh, that uh, everyone should find them. Okay, I agree. That's the end of that story too. How much time have we done? It could have been anything. Oh my god, we have like twelve more minutes. All right, I, I'm, I'm on a topics. Out. I'm well. I'm here Where in Los you? Angeles. Where were you last week? Where was I? I was here, and then I was I I uh, I literally did stand up comedy here. Ate the meatloaf. I hear I hear people wrestling. Are you guys getting their checks? Do you guys want to go? You don't know. No, Lori wants to go. <laughs> so I'm begging saying. the crowd to help me end it early. You guys, you guys have to go, right? It's Mother's Day. You have people to see. Okay. <laughs> I was in New York last weekend. Oh, were you? I did my little fly out, my quickie. Right. Get some sets. How many, uh, how many shows? I did. I was supposed to do seven on Saturday night, and then one got canceled because the weather was really nice and New Yorkers were out. So uh, I just did six, but they were bing, so bing, 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 bing. Yeah. I had no time between. I the I, I ended up. I had, I guess I had a little time at uh, stand up, but after one of them, and I uh, was hanging out with Dean Edwards. Do you know Dean Edwards? I met him. He I don't used know. to be on SNL, and um, he he's been married. Uh, he's like one of those rare comedy like success stories in a personal life. Like he's been married oh. to, for a long time, and he has two kids, and they're like you know teenagers now. It's, it was kind of cool to catch up with him. Right? You're like, how are you doing it? Exactly. It's, 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 <laughs> you're like, can I please somehow glom onto this? So, and then you went and did a one nighter last night, didn't oh you? Oh my or, god, you're last like, night last? I was I did this show in Arroyo Grande, which is. Um, a Almost three hour drive from here, and I hadn't really. North, I took the south? gig. Where it paid it? well. It was north. Okay, it's the north of Santa Barbara. Okay, and so uh, I was like, because the guy booking it, it was is really notoriously cheap, and I'm like, why does this pay so well? <laughs> right, and then then I got out Google Maps. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Um, but it was a far enough. It, I mean, it was it was enough money to make it worth the drive. Yeah, three right? hour drive. It was a theater gig. Okay, um, it was the best. Is of it a, regular? No, it's not. Damn. I know that was your first. I could tell you sniffing around like a, <laughs> like a hungry. I don't usually animal. work for that guy, but I would. I would work. I would drive was, three hours. It was the. Money. It was ba- labeled as the best of the San Francisco comedy competition. Okay, and so uh, uh, Bent Washburn was headlining. Oh and my I god, did thirty and um, Ellis Rodriguez did thirty. He won, I guess, last year. And uh, uh, he's he's from Modesto because we were on a group chat, and I was like, "Who's the 209? It's like, "Oh, I thought it was Marcella." <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Kevin Shea uh, emceed. And, okay, uh, it was cool. So f- there's four of us, yeah, yeah. But um, I was gonna like leave after my set right afterwards because I'm not. I used to be really good at these three and four hour drives. I used to drive from my house to Reading and then leave after the gig and come home, and and so. Uh, I had to stay to hang out and s- say goodnight to the crowd. No like, hotel? Fuck. There was a hotel, but oh, I good. didn't want to wake up on, on Mother's Day and have a three-hour drive. Like, I just wanted to be home. Like, there's no one in my house. I want to be alone in it. <laughs> I don't want to be in a hotel while my mother's not here. Right, I'm like, right. I'd <laughs> rather die in a crash from being sleepy driving than stay in another hotel. So, right, right. So I was like driving in 15 minute increments. I was like, all right, I have seven sets of 15. Like I, at some point I'm like, I try to break it into swimming sets. I'm like seven times 15 minutes. And every 15 minutes I'm going to check in and make sure I'm okay. And if not, I'll, I'll pull over and take a nap. So I got home late, but that was like, you know, six hours of driving in one day. And I was beat. Did you get to, uh, was Bent? Bent Washburn's one of my favorite He's comics. really funny, yeah. He's, he's such, he's a great comic. He's, yes. Uh, and he's also kind of, um, he like, zigzagged a little bit. Like, he lived in Germany for a while because his wife works, uh, she's in the Air Force. She's a colonel. Is she a a full bird colonel <laughs> in the Air Force. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they lived in Germany for a little bit, and then he would come up, come fly out here, do gigs for a little while, and then go back. and Right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. they have kids and stuff like that. He has one of the darkest jokes. He was raised Mormon. Yeah. She was raised Catholic. 
And I don't know if they showed it on the last... Com- it was the year we both did Last Comic Standing. Yeah. And they asked him, they said, oh, you were raised Mormon, you probably don't have any real dark co- comedy. And he goes, do I got jerk jokes? Do I got, I got some, some dark jokes? And they said... And they literally, I think one of them said... Do one of the judges? A, one of the ju- it was okay. It was the year that Aunt, Aunt Kathleen, and right. Alonzo were yeah. doing it. Yeah, that's the one where I was on the dais with Amy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was that year. Okay. Did you get in that year? Uh, I did get into the semifinals, but that was... They booked the semifinals. We had been saving up for a year, and I'd just gotten married. Yeah. And we had saved up to go to Italy. Okay. And so I was like, uh, I'm not giving up my tickets to Italy to try out for a thing that I hate. <laughs> so, uh, and so we went to Italy, and Italy was great. <laughs> I don't know if you've been. You probably have. It's great. <laughs> They're doing really good work with pasta. Okay, so, um, but the, uh, yeah, but I, uh, I don't know that. I think he's. I think his joke is. I. It would be weird to tell the joke, right? Well, you know, you're crediting him. As I'm long credi- as you don't and, fuck it and up. I think it's on his album. You should get Bent Washwards at, at unless, oh, I'll probably fuck it up. But it was, okay. it was just how him and his wife, uh, they had a kid, and they were arguing about whether to raise the kid Mormon or Catholic, and it got heated. And finally he said, well, at least our pedophiles marry their victims. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so he told that joke, and literally they, the three, either the three of them or the muckety mucks at NBC were like, too dark, we can't use it. <laughs> you can't ask for dark and oh, then man. say too dark. Not right. Fuck you. <laughs> he, he had this joke. I'm gonna bungle the setup. Something about uh, about sneaking. He goes, the best way to sneak alcohol, like if you're gonna see a, your child's <laughs> school play, the best way to sneak alcohol. Alcohol into an elementary school is in your bloodstream. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. nice. That is Damn. a good one. Yeah. Just We just end with other, our favorite jokes of other people. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna Friedman's joke on Conan yeah. about how she's half man on her dad's side. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's great. a great joke. I forgot that one. That's that's gold, man. If you if you that if you want to read internet comments, uh, oh, go check out Jenna's set on YouTube. Uh, Conan, their Conan set. It's on YouTube, and um, and then read the comments because she was hype, very feminist, very funny, and then she went after Nazis. So she drew she drew everybody <laughs> to her, every nutbag in the world. It's it's like it has a a ton of views it, because people are angry. Yeah. they're like hate watching part of it. You know, yeah, people. Yeah. I mean, people love it obviously but so yeah, many people loved great. it but they're but the trolls and the bots and the crazy and i also love like she doesn't care she can take it yeah i mean no. she probably doesn't love it but she she knew that that was probably going to happen if she went that in that direction comedically well, and, and I love she's that like the fuck GP, it i don't care that they were like yeah yeah that they let her they encouraged her to do that set yeah that was great so that's that's the delight of that we might be at an hour hold on <laughs> We have uh, four more minutes. Oh, really? Yes. So Okay, so not this week, but next week I'm going on the road with Maria again. Where are you going? Because uh, we're going to go to Royal Oak, Michigan, and yeah. then we're going to go to Cincinnati. And um, she was trying Royal to... Royal Oak, are you working on the Comedy Castle? No. You're uh, not? No, I... Uh, Royal Oak is... That's cockadoodle... Uh, that's the, near the, Detroit. The, it's like rich Detroit. It's Mark Ridley's Comedy Yeah, Comedy, Comedy Castle. Castle. He said to me 15 years ago, and I did stop sending him my avails. He books the entire year in September, Mark Ridley does. Right. The whole, Still? Uh, to my knowledge. Because I stopped sending my avails probably about eight years ago. But he, uh, it was, he told, he booked me one time to headline a weekend. I did good, uh, in my opinion. Possibly, maybe not in his. Uh, but because uh, he's never had me back, he said I was too much like Kathleen Madigan. Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, yeah, guy. you wouldn't want that. She's she's amazing. You would want more hilarious. Yeah, perfectly it's, it's a good flawed complaint comedy. on ten levels. You know, it's such a weird. thing And you're thing not to like say. Kathleen Madigan. Not at all. And guess what? There's room for both of you on a, a club schedule. Right. It turns oh, out there's God. 52 weeks. But uh, so no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, but he. So he never did book me back, and uh, uh, clearly, uh, probably never will. But we're what? doing a theater. Good. Yeah. With, with Maria. Ha ha. Fuck you. There you go. 
And I'll bring merch and I'll make a billion dollars. Oh, I hope you murder his sales that week. And I'm sorry for the headliner of that week. Right. I, I don't, I don't mean hope it. I it's don't, nothing I, personal I, against you. <laughs> you just want to hurt the comedy castle for being sexist. Right. Unless it's Mike Veneman. And then, no, it's, uh, I don't know why. Are he's you, a road guy. And he's, uh, he, he narked on me once to a, head, to a booker. Oh, that's right. Yeah. To Ken so. Muller. Yeah. That's right. You told me that story. You guys, listen to the backlog <laughs> for the great Mike Veneman story. And here's the thing about Mike Veneman. Dead now. I didn't kill him. Much like, <laughs> much like my mother's. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what snitches get? <laughs> uh, we, should, we should end on that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for coming out, guys.
Now leaving Nerdist.com.